Seems crazy. It's good to be here. Seems like you haven't been here in a couple of weeks. Probably feel the same way since we didn't have church last week. It's good to be in the house of the Lord with lights on and electricity and the air conditioning working. We pray God, so it's good sometimes to walk through that so you can appreciate what you have. Amen? Sometimes we take those things for granted and we forget that we are really, 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 truly blessed in our country to have those things. Or we've just really gotten spoiled. That's probably more like it. We've really gotten spoiled to those things. And, but it is good that God has, back, has us back in his house. And you know what uh, we do? Renee did tell you this. We, uh, we have half of our church down in the... It, it, San Miguel Park, down around Zawali, and just, we preached there last night. So we, we preached there late, got home late. So we got to preach to half the church last night. So we're preaching to the other half this morning. So different sermon, Charlie and Stacy, just in case. They, they drove back with us. Wait, they, were, they were faster than we were, but they got here quicker. So, but they were there and came back, so they, they were part of the service last night. But it is good to be here today. So if you have your Bibles, and Renee read the scripture, there's a couple, but the main one I want to sort of launch from, and I want to read it again. She read it out of the New International Version. I want to read it out of the message, and it's more of a paraphrase. It's not an exact translation, but I love the message, and if you are a reader of the Word, and you should be a reader of the Word, amen, I hope you are reading the scripture, uh, because that is your lifeline. If you if you don't read the Word, you're sort of cutting off your lifeline to God. Uh, if you want God to speak to you, the best way that God speaks to you is through His Word. This right here is your lifeline. It's what God tells you that you need to be doing. He gives you the encouragement that you need as you walk as a believer. Uh, he gives you instructions. Sometimes He gets up in your Kool-Aid and tells you what you shouldn't be doing, which is okay because sometimes we need to be told, quit doing that. So when I told the crowd last night, that was almost my message last night. Just sit down, shut up, and listen. Maybe God is trying to tell you something. Because that's the problem. Sometimes we're not listening to what God's trying to say to us. And he has so much through his spirit speaking to our souls to kind of guide us. So just try to look at his word and see what it has to say. But I like to read out of a good translation. And New International Version to me is one of the best. But then I like to read it out of the message because it seems to speak different. It kind of helps, not different in a way that it misquotes it, but what it does, it sort of brings it out so you can really understand it more deeply. So if you need another version to kind of help you understand when you're reading it, grab a copy of the message because it's great. And the guy that sort of did it is a very solid uh, in his theology, so I always recommend this. But here's what it says in the message. It says it like this. God can do anything, you know, far more than you can ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. Isn't that awesome? God can do more for you than you can even imagine in your mind. Now think about in your wildest dreams, God can do that. Isn't that a great way to start a scripture? Now this is God speaking to you as a believer. And if we can grasp these things, if we can understand these things, and then in the end, believe them. Not for the people that are around you, but to make it very personal. Yes, God can do more for me than I can ever imagine. Then it goes a little bit further and it says this. He does it not by pushing us around, but by working within us. What does he do? His spirit works deeply and gently within us. Again, there's the Holy Spirit helping guide us. When you're saved, you get the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit comes alongside you. He begins to guide you. He begins to teach you. He begins to show you the things that you need to hear. That's what is so awesome about having the Holy Spirit's presence with us. Because then we're listening for that. And you can't hear it unless you're reading it. Can I get an amen? I'm not going to preach what I preached last night unless the Lord tells me to. But you can't hear unless you're listening. And if you're listening to what God's Word says, then the Holy Spirit can grab that and sort of put it into your life. The problem is we're listening to too much of the junk that the world is telling you 
And because you're listening to the junk that the world is telling you, from, I don't know, maybe you're looking at other people and you're hearing what these people are saying to you. Maybe it's just the, maybe it's a favorite podcast you're listening to. Maybe it's a, a person that you read about or you're looking at a certain magazine or you're reading a certain article in a newspaper and they, beca they become your, your sound box for the things you hear. And then what happens, it makes you where you can't hear what God's Word is saying. Remember, I've been teaching this all summer, is that the problem with most of us is, God says to you, you hear what the devil's saying to you and about you, and you can't even hear what God's Word is saying about you. Here he is saying this about you, and I'm telling you, there are people in this church today that think in their mind right now, this don't apply to me. They're saying right now, yeah, you don't know me, you don't know my life, you don't know where I come from, you don't know the hardship that I've been through, you don't know the abuse that I've been through, so for you to stand there, preacher, and tell me that God can do more in me than I can ever imagine, we can't believe that, because we have been told the lie for so long that we can't get beyond that. And what God wants us to see today, and we're going to show you this through the Word of God, how you know what? You can do the things that God commands you to do, and it's very, 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 very vital that you do the things that God is guiding you to do because there's a reason. So today I want to talk about casting a shadow. Because I don't know if you've ever heard the old adage, the old saying, we live... We live in someone's shadow. And it's so true that we live in other people's shadow. And it's because the people around us, we're underneath that, and then we grow underneath it, and we hear these things, and no matter who you are, somebody has influenced you. Can I get an amen? How many here would be able to say, yes, somebody has influenced me along the way to be who I am today? Raise your hand. There, everybody in this room, you had been underneath someone's shadow, and while you were there, you were learning from them. They cast a shadow into your life, and you learned from them. You know, it's kind of funny. You ever think about this when you were younger, maybe you were a kid, and you're watching your parents? And they would do things, right? They would just drive you crazy. Anybody here can relate to this? You had parents, and they would do things, and you said, I will never do that when I get older. Raise your hand. Oh, I know I did. I would watch and hear my, my mom. I'm glad she's not here today, so don't be telling on me. But my mom, she, she had this thing that she does. It's so funny. If you know her real well, you know she does this. So when you're talking to her on the phone, don't tell her I said this. If you talk to her, she has, she has this thing. She always repeats what you say. Amen. If you know her, you know she does this. So I can say, hey, we're going to drive down to... Uh, Houston to be with her name. Oh, you're going to drive them to Houston to be with her family. I'm like, that's what I just said, Mom. You just repeated exactly what she does. She does that. And it's so funny. I used to say, I am never going to do that when I get older. I'm not going to do that. And now you know what I find myself doing at 60 years old? I hear somebody who says it, and I repeat it exactly what they said. You ever done that? I mean, you just, your parents, because you're underneath their shadow. And you're learning, and they have such a great influence on your life. It just happens. I don't know. So I think that we're all maybe in a very kind of a funny way. We sort of are like that. We have people that have influenced us. And I love my mom. I'm one of those that I'm glad that I had a great mom and a great dad. They had great influence into my life. Right? So it's easy for me to say that. Now, I know there may be, and I'm not trying to get you to feel bad about this or anything like that, because I know there's some people here today, there may be some people here today, that when they think about the influence that their parents had or the cast, the, the shadow that they cast in their life, it may not have been a good thing. You may have grew up with parents that were not good. They may have been abusive. They may have been those kind of parents that sort of beat, beat you up mentally, and that's the shadow that you came underneath. You may have came up in a family where the mother or the father was even absent. They weren't in there. You didn't get that feel, that, that shadow, because that's what you came under, underneath. That was the shadow. They, they cast a shadow, but it was, 
And you didn't feel it because you weren't there. They weren't there for you. So I know this is kind of different for a lot of people. But here's the thing that I want you to see to sort of lay a foundation. People are living in your shadow. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you are in your life. People are living in your shadow. So let me, let me sort of break this down in three ways. I believe that there are some people in your life, uh, they are there just purely by intentional, right? You know, they are there because they have to be there, right? If your kids are there, it's very intentional. They are in your life because they have to be there and they are living in your shadow. Listen to me, parents, grandparents. I mean, this was supposed to be my Father's Day sermon, so but I changed it to everybody today. Since we got past Father's Day, but I want our fathers to know that we have not forgotten you. We want to say Happy Father's Day. And next Sunday, we're going to give out your Father's Day gift. So you got to come back next Sunday to get that, because we wanted all our fathers here. So next week, fathers, we have not forgotten you. You will get your Father's Day gift next week, but you got to come back next week and say, I'll be here. <laughs> you get your gift because you never know what it's going to be. So, there are some people in your life, by choice, they, they see them, they want, to, they want to be close, they are close to you, so just by intentional, they are in your life. It can be your, your family, it can be people that you're very, very close to, they are in your shadow, and you are influencing them. Listen, please, I need you to catch this. There are people in your life that have been put there intentionally and you are influencing who they will become. Now that's tough, but it's the truth. You're casting a shadow. The people that are in your life, that you are putting seeds into their life, what kind of seeds are you planting there? There are some people that are there just by, you know, proximity. Prox Proximity. Proximity. Okay. They're there by proximity. Right? People who, you know, people you work with. You know, they are there by proximity. That's what they do. You work with them. You may not think that you have an influence, but they are there in your life. And you're casting a shadow. You don't even know it, but you're casting a shadow on their life. And what are you trying, what kind of influence? It could be people that you know casually. It could be some of your friends, but they're in your life. There are people there that are by accident, right? There are people there in your life that are by pure accident. It could be somebody, like if you go to the Dollar General store, you know, if you're like me, you go there once or twice a week. Man, I, I, well, I know most of those ladies that work in there and the guys that work in there. I know them, right? But it's purely by accident. I mean, we, I go to a coffee shop and I know the person at the coffee shop, unfortunately, because I go in the coffee shop a lot, right? So it's very accidental. And what I'm saying is there are people in your life that you're casting a shadow. And I want to ask you today, as we're thinking about this, what kind of shadow are you projecting? Because here's the thing. I need you to catch this. They are asking this. They are asking you themselves a question. This person in my life, I'm looking at them, and they say that they're a believer. They say they love God. They go to church and they're a part of the church. They say they love Jesus. Do I want to be that kind of person? Because you're casting a shadow of who Jesus is into their life. Now what kind of Jesus are you projecting for them? Because if we're in Christ and Christ is in us, when we live out in the world, when we're in church, it's easy to project Jesus because we all love Jesus, amen? But, and it, but what do you do when you get out in those people that are not there intentionally, they're there by accident, and they're looking at you, and they know you go to the major church in Nazareth, and they're watching your life. They are watching you so closely, and they're asking the question, man, do I want to be a part of that? Do I want that Jesus? Let me ask you, what kind of Jesus are you living in the world that you're in right now? What kind of shadow do you have? Do they look at you and say, man, if that's what Jesus looks like, I don't need none of that. If 
that's how Jesus acts and that's how the followers of Jesus act, then I don't want none of that. I told you a couple weeks ago that there are people leaving the church every single day because they look at the church and they say, man, if that is the church and that's what Christ looks like, then I don't need any of that. The one thing that the church should project, it ought to project the love of God. Can I get an amen? amen? They ought to walk through the door and feel the love of God, and you should be able to project that on them, because that is God working in you, through you, to them. We shouldn't be like, oh man, we don't need it. We shouldn't even have a sign out in front of the church that says, come as you are, and they come as you are. And we ask them, why did you come as you are? Because let me tell you what, we need people to come into the church. Let me tell you, this is not sort of place where we have where we have polished saints. Man, this needs to be a church where sinners come in, and they're looking for help, and they're looking for something. And let me tell you what, we ought to be inviting to the sinners of the world that need Jesus. We need to be that kind of church. There's too many people out there hurting. And they need a church where they will cast all over our community. We love Jesus. We follow Jesus in all that we do. Can I get a baby amen? amen. Can I get a real loud amen? amen. Can you say, man, I'm glad to be back to church. Woo! Everybody go, woo! Woo! Yeah, man, that was good. I like that. So here we go. <laughs> I think this. I believe this. I believe that most people, I, and I don't know, if, and I know there are outliers. Now don't come to me after church and say, that's not true, preacher. I know that some people skew it. There are people out there that aren't like this. But most people, man, they want to leave a good legacy. They want, to be, they want to leave a positive thing. They don't want to leave the world and say, man, uh, I'm glad that guy's gone. I don't think most people want that. They would rather leave a legacy that's a good legacy, right? That people look at them and say, wow, that was a good guy. That was a good man. What was so, what was so neat, you know that by now that, that uh, Renee's dad passed away. On our way home uh, from, from Branson, we left Branson went into Oklahoma City, and as soon as we got into Oklahoma City, Renee's brother called her and said that her dad had passed. We knew he wasn't doing good. We knew he wasn't doing really well. We knew, we wondered when it was going to be, and sure enough, on our way home from Branson to Oklahoma City, he passed away. So we decided to come on. We came on back to Blanchard, and then that's, uh, two hours later, the world crashed here in, in our community. Where they just crashed. I mean, we were glad we came home because it was insane, right? So a couple of days later, we went down to Houston. Well, on the way down, they were talking, the family, they were trying to figure out how they were going to do this. They found out that her dad had bought a plot, but he didn't have a plan. So they were saying things like it's going to be $15,000. They were trying to figure out how we're going to do this because we all don't have that much money. Even six of them together couldn't come up with that much. So they were like, how are they going to do this? Because this, and the funeral home said, we ain't going, we ain't, you got to put it all up front. We don't have a, we don't have a payment plan here. They said, we want the money up front and we're not doing it. We're like, wow. So we're like, what are we going to do here? They talked and talked. Well, finally, God stepped in. Because let me tell you about my father-in-law and how, it was a blessing that I had such a great father-in-law. He spent 55 years at a local radio station in Houston. Every Tuesday night, he volunteered for three hours. He volunteered for that radio station for 55 years. And you think about that. That's incredible. Some of us, some of us well, I'm not, but some of you ain't even that old yet. So think about your whole life. That's what you did for 55 years. You volunteered at that radio station. Every Tuesday night, he was there. Had a pastor show. Got to meet all these pastors. They would come in and talk on the radio. And he was the guy. It was amazing. He even did another program on there where they did a Spanish program. And what he would do, he, he, he spoke Spanish fluently. So he would do a, another program that was a Spanish program. I don't even know if Renee remembered this, but when I first met Renee and I first met him when the Spanish were trying to get their USA citizenship, he would teach a class. You remember this? He actually taught the class.
to the Spanish people as they were trying to get their citizenship into America. Did it all for nothing. Everything he did, he worked that way. There was a medical, the, the, the church he was at had a medical uh, facility there, and the Spanish would come in, and, I mean, the uh, people would come in and they couldn't speak English, so he would be an interpreter. Did it for nothing. All his life. That's what he did. He just, it was the love of God coming out of him. And he cast this shadow that was amazing. So what happened is the guy that trained him, the guy he trained to take his spot at the radio station, found out. And then we found out he owns three funeral homes in Houston. And he said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I will do the funeral at cost. So it went from 15000 down to five. We were still struggling. Radio station said, you know what? We'll pay for it. <laughs> That radio station, he spent 55 years of his life volunteering for him, paid for everything. And then they just started piling stuff on. We're going we're gonna to pay for the flowers, we're going to pay for the opening and closing. I don't know if they've done that, but there's a lot of stuff that they started doing. They were taking, they were still here. The, it just grew and grew and they just paid it all because this man left a shadow that was amazing. It was crazy because when we did the funeral, we were headed to the funeral, to the cemetery. And Renee's brother is a policeman there in Houston. And then we had, I bet there were 10 cops just surrounding us. We pulled on the I-45, and if you've ever been on I-45 going toward Galveston, it's crazy. They literally stopped the interstate. They went up on the interstate, stopped everybody, and they said, come on on, Jim, kill them. And we just went down I-45 just having fun, you know, it was amazing. Because this man cast a shadow. He cast an incredible shadow in the people's life that he was around. I told Renee, I said, man, that's God honoring him. It was God honoring him for who he was. So let me tell you real quickly, real quickly, let me give you a couple points here. Here's number one, and you need to know this. You, your shadow has an influence whether you like it or not. You have a shadow. I think about my mentors, the people that I... I may not be a very smart guy, and I know sometimes I'm not that smart, but one of the things that I'm glad I did is I put people in my life intentionally that I knew that would have a positive influence in my life. I put these people, these mentors. I'm glad that I grew up in this church. I'm glad I grew up under a great man like Brother Cockrell. I'm glad he was in my life. I'm glad he became one of my mentors. And, I, and later, when I came into ministry, I intentionally made sure that he became my God in that process. Because I, I wanted to make sure if I was going to fall under somebody's shadow, it was somebody that loved God very much, that believed in prayer very much, and that believed in the holiness message very much. So I intentionally put myself in that shadow. Because I realized at some point, my shadow is going to have an influence if I like it or not. So here's the thing. Look up here. This is important. You're going to have an influence on people in your life whether you like it or not. You can be a great person and be a great leader and leave a bad shadow. Hitler was a great leader. You may not like it, you may hate to hear the name, but you're going to have to agree with me. If anybody was a great leader, it was Hitler. Now, would, he, would you say he left a good, a bad, a good shadow or a bad shadow? He left a bad shadow. So when people look at Hitler, and sometimes people, it just turns their stomach just to hear his name. You're going to leave an influence, either good or bad. Satan, I would say, was a pretty good leader. How many would agree with that? If you can be in heaven and take one-third of the angels down with you, you'd have to say, he must have been a pretty good leader. But i got to tell you, the shadow he left, I've seen too many people in my life personally that he has destroyed. 
or they left their badge down. I want you to think about something. I'm, I'm going to cruise through this fast, but you need to think about something. You may think that you don't have much influence, but I'm going to tell you, you have influence. You have a shadow. There are people watching you. It may be your sons. It may be your daughters. It may be your grandkids, but they are looking right at you. And if you don't think, if you don't think you're not making a difference, I'm going to tell you, you're sadly mistaken. Because you are making a difference. Like I told you a while ago, I, I've told myself I would never do this, what my mom did, but I'm, still, I'm doing it because she's had such a great influence on my life. I know I'm in the church today because of a lady named Grandma House. She had a great influence on me. She was one of the greatest women that I knew besides my mom. She's one of them and my wife, of course. Those are the women in my life that became people that helped me see what I needed to be and pointed me toward Jesus. And let me tell you, if, if you don't have the right people in your life, please, I tell you this all the time. Look up here. Please, I'm begging you. You've got to find people and put yourself there intentionally. You, you may have to force yourself in, but you put those positive people in your life because you need that. You need to have people that are leading you in the right direction. Too many of us have people in our life that are speaking lies to us. They're speaking non-truth to us. They're putting us down. They're taking us in directions that we don't want to go, but somehow we're believing them. We're falling under these people's shadow that doesn't have good, good direction, and we're just staying there. And what's going to happen is that shadow that you've lived under is going to eventually be your shadow. It's going to be your shadow. Take a look at your life. Just take a look at your life, and think about the people that are looking at you. Those eyes that are looking up at you and watching you. They're watching every step you take. They're listening to every word you say. They're looking at you. They're listening. They, 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 they are taking in what you're giving them. Think about those ones that you love so much. It's kind of neat that we have all these babies right now. It's kind of fun. I mean, I love to grow the church that way, don't you? If we're going to grow the church, let's grow it with babies. Amen? I can't think of another time. I think we have like five or six right now. It's just kind of cool to have so many babies. But man, those babies, man, they, it's amazing to watch a, a mother and a baby and a little child because they're, they're always watching and looking right into their eyes. They're learning. Some of you have teenagers. You don't think they're watching you, but they're leaning into you. You leave a shadow in the life of the mind. I'm going to ask you to do this. I'm going to ask you to stand. God's telling me to do that. I'm going to ask you to bow your head. Dear Lord, we want to thank you for our time today. We thank you for your word. We thank you that, Lord, the thing that you want more than anything else is you want that Ephesians 3.20 to come in and really for us to believe it. That, Lord, no matter what, no matter what, no matter my past, no matter the things that I've gone through, no matter what I'm up against, it doesn't matter. Because, Lord, you can do more through me than I can ever imagine. And, Lord, if I would just back up and allow your spirit to work within me, Lord, I can begin to cast that shadow that my kids need to see, that my family needs to see, that those closest to me that are watching, the ones I have influence over, Lord, they're, they're looking for me to poor Jesus. And, Lord, I need, I need you. And Lord, I don't know about every person in this room today. I don't know what they're going through. I don't know what they're up to doing. I don't know what kind of influence they have. I don't know the people that are leaning into me. 
But I pray, Lord, that today they'll begin to understand that more than anything else, they have this ability to make a difference in the lives of people that are around them. And today, I pray, Lord, more than anything else, that if there will be people today that says, you know what, I know right now I'm not being that person that I need to be for my family. I'm not being that person. I'm not being that mom. I'm not being that dad. I'm not being that man of God. I'm not being that woman of God that I need to be in my community, in my workplace, in my family. I'm not being that. And today, I want to make, I want to make a commitment that I will step forward and begin to be this man and this woman that I need to be. And if you're here today, and maybe God has spoken to your heart, maybe he's opened up your heart to help you see those things, when nobody looking around, you say, Preacher, can you, lift, can you pray for me? Because I want to be that kind of dad. I want to be that kind of mom. I want to be that kind of man, that kind of woman. If that's you today, I want you to raise your hand. I want to be that kind of influence. You can put them down. Lord, you've seen hands go up all over this place. Mine right there with them. I want to be a great influence for those around me. Lord, I know you put me in that place to be that. I get to be the pastor of this church. And Lord, I cast a shadow. And the one thing that I want to do more than anything else is I want to cast the kind of shadow that needs to be cast among these people here. Your people, your sons, your daughters. Lord, there's hands that have gone up. There's moms, there's dads, there's men, there's women that have raised their hands today to make a commitment to you to say, hey, Lord, help me. Help me to be that kind of man. Help me to be that kind of woman. Help me to stand in the gap when I need to stand in the gap for the people that are around me. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for the things that you're doing in your church. Lord, I thank you for all that you've done over the last couple of weeks. Thank you for being uh, this 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 person, this, this God that we can lean into as we walk through a kind of an interesting couple of weeks. Thank you for getting us to the other side. We praise you for all that you do and all the blessings that you bring to us. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed.